and welcome to lesson 18.2 in the Alice tutorial series. Now in lesson 18.1 we created a basic mouse tracker and we're going to be continuing that with lesson 18.2. Uh, lesson 18.1 we created an x and a y variable and then wrote a method in Alice that constantly checked the x and y position on the screen and reported that back to those variables. So if you didn't watch lesson 18.1 when we head on over to Alice here in just a second, you might see a program that looks a little bit unfamiliar. If you want to get caught up, you can find lesson 18.1 in the playlist and kind of follow along to get to where we are now. Now the goal in lesson 18.2 is going to be using that mouse tracker and creating a mouse click handler so that our program will react intelligently to mouse clicks in different regions of the screen. So let's go ahead and get started with lesson 18.2, the second video in the basic mouse tracking tutorial. So here we are back in our Alice world. And for those of you who uh, are just joining us, or if you want to make sure that you're still caught up, all we did was create a world method called mouse tracker, two variables, X and Y that are both world variables. And X is set to the mouse distance from left edge and Y is set from the mouse distance from, from the top edge. And then we added this uh, small little mouse tracker method into a while the world is running event. Essentially what we have now, if we hit play, is you can see our X and Y values are constantly updated as our mouse moves around the screen. Now, As of right now, our program doesn't do a whole lot with that information, but as we start, it's going to be assumed that you have a program that is at least correctly tracking the mouse along the screen. But before we start that, actually, uh, one important thing that we do have to note about this, when we hit play, uh, the numbers you're seeing over here on my screen might be very different from what you're seeing on your screen. It's completely dependent on the resolution of your particular monitor. So these numbers are going to be different for everybody. You know, your right hand side of the screen might not be 1050 pixels. It might be more or less depending on the size of your monitor. So don't get caught up that your numbers have to be similar to mine. And particularly in this, in this lesson, a lot of your numbers will be different, but I'll show you how to find your numbers. But uh, don't feel like you're, don't feel lost if your numbers aren't matching what you're seeing on the screen, because it's going to be completely normal for everyone to have different numbers. So in order to provide the example, um, we're going to add another object, and I'm going to add just some 3D text to my screen. So let's go ahead and add 3D text, and I'm going to put this in Times New Roman. And right now we'll just have this as a uh, placeholder, so we'll have a placeholder value of 1. We'll see that gets kind of thrown on the screen there. And what I want to do is position this right in the center of my screen. And let's go ahead and make this uh, a different color so we can see a little bit better. So we'll go to the properties and set this to uh, green for now. And we'll raise it up on the screen here and kind of center it. So now we have 3D text that right now doesn't really represent a, a whole heck of a lot. It's just kind of out there in the middle of the screen. But we are going to be changing that 3D text here in just a moment. So add 3D text to the screen, kind of put a placeholder value in here for now, and center it on your screen. Now that I have this on the screen, I don't really need it anymore. I'll be using it later. So I'm going to set the is showing property to false. So I know it's there, uh, and the program will turn it on and off at various different points. But to start the program, it's OK for that object to be invisible. Next, I'm going to create a new world level method. So click on world, go to methods, and this is going to be my mouse click handler. Now this has to be separate than the mouse tracker because I need this in a different type of event. The mouse tracker is going to be running at all times. The mouse click event I want only to occur when the mouse is clicked. So create a new event or when the mouse is clicked on something. And in this case, I don't care what it's clicked on because I'm not using Alice's object tracking. I'm building my own. So I want this to run when the mouse is clicked on anything. So when the mouse is clicked on anything, I want it to run my mouse click method. Now, in order to show you how this works, let's head back over to Microsoft Paint. And I have kind of a uh, crude graph drawn on the screen. Now these are estimated points, but the, you'll get the idea. 
So the top left of our screen is always going to be 0, .00, and our mouse tracker knows this. For purposes of our example, I'm going to assume that these lines cross at the point 250, 250. It's probably a very different number, but this will work for our example. And then I'm going to assume that this bottom right-hand corner is the point 500, 500. The way that we're going to check and see which quadrant is being clicked on is by doing a simple uh, X and Y comparison. So I want to see if the quadrant in the upper left is currently being clicked. So at the time the mouse is clicked, at the instant the mouse is clicked, I'm going to check the X and Y coordinate from my X and Y variables. Now if my X value is less than 250, then I know that it has to be to the left of this center line in this example. Now the reason for that is, if X is less than 250, then I know if this line represents 250 and X is say 150, then I know my mouse is over here in this region. If my X value is say 400 at that given time, that means my mouse is over here and clearly not in quadrant number one. So checking the X value lets me know that if the X value is less than 250, I know it's less, or I know it's to the left of this line right here. Then I check to see what my Y value is. And what I want to do is find my Y value is less than 250 as well. The reason I want to see that is if my mouse is up here at the top, I know this line right here represents the value 250. If my mouse is below it, the Y value is, it has to be 251 or higher. So I know if the Y value is less than 250, it's got to be above this center line right here. And the only time that the mouse is above this center line and to the left of this center line is when my mouse is in quadrant number one. So we're going to go ahead and translate that into Alice code. Let's head back over to Alice. In Alice, we'll do this with a simple if check. If and put in a placeholder of true. Now I have to check two conditions here. And I also have to find out what is my center point in Alice. To do this, I'm going to use play, and I'm simply going to write these down using a pen and paper. I'm going to put my mouse right in the middle of the screen. And so on my particular screen, I can see that my X value at the center is 539, and my Y value is 391. So this point right here is 591, or 539, 391. So instead of using 250, 250 like I did in my example, I know that my X value has to be below 539, and my Y value has to be below 391. If that's true, then I know my mouse is in quadrant number one here, and you can kind of see that represented in the numbers. When my mouse is here, we're at the point about 250, 200, and both of those are less than the X and Y value we discussed earlier. If my mouse is over here in region number two, I can see that my X is greater than the 539 than it should be, and so I know that I, my mouse is not in region number one because the X value is off. I'm going to translate those numbers, 539 and 391, into this if statement. So let's go to our world variables and say if x is less than, and I'll use less than or equal to, and put in the number 539. But I also need to check the y value, so I'm going to use the arrow here, select logic, and use and true. And I'll replace this true with the Y value that I know should be less than or equal to 391. So let's go to other 391. When my mouse is clicked, it's going to check to see what the current value of X and Y is. If X is below 539 and Y is below 391, then I know my mouse is in region number one and I can have it react accordingly. For purposes of this example right here, we'll just go ahead and change the 3D text is showing property to true. And we'll have that happen instantly, so duration of zero seconds. Then have the program wait two seconds and then turn our 3D text off again. 
And we'll go ahead and test now. When I click my mouse, say in region number two, nothing should happen. Four, nothing should happen. Three, nothing should happen. And it's because those X and Y values aren't meeting our criteria. But every time I click the mouse button, our mouse click method is running. So let's try it in region number one. You can see the number one shows up on the screen and then disappears as our method has instructed it to. And it doesn't matter where in region number one I click, my program is able to pick up that I'm in region number one because those X and Y coordinates cover this entire area out here. Now we're going to repeat this process for region number two. Let's head back over to paint. We'll use a different color here and let's go ahead and use green for this example. Now I know that my X value needs to be greater than 250 to be in region number two. And I know that my Y value still has to be less than 250. Now the reason for this is, oops, and that guy shouldn't have been there. Uh, this guy's supposed to be a blue arrow. I guess I clicked on red before I switched over. But let's go ahead and use our green arrow here. If Y is less than 250, then I know it's still above this line right here. Because no matter what side of the, the uh, vertical center line my mouse is on, it's still up in this top region where Y is less than 250. But if X is greater than 250, I know it's crossed over this line right here, and I need to be in region number two. When I head back over to Alice, I'm simply going to do another check. And I'll even go ahead and copy this if statement right here, and we'll make a copy. Because the only change we really need to make, we we know the point five third and 391 is the points for our for the screen in this example. I just want to check and see if the world is greater than 539 instead of less than. To do this, I'm going to right click, change to, and change it to greater than or equal to. Now that's it. We're going to have to change what our 3D text is uh, printed at, and that's something I forgot to do here as well. So let's uh, change the text for, from uh, what its default at what now is a one over a duration of zero seconds. But if it's in region two, I want our text to be changed to a number two over a duration of zero seconds. Uh, that way it doesn't show up as a, a one when we click in region number two. Now this check is really similar to the one we did for check number one, except we're seeing it is X greater than 539. When I hit play, you can see one still works. My X value is 389. And as it gets over that 539, so now X has a value of 627, we click. And we see our 3D text is changing to a 2. It's showing up and disappearing. And I can click anywhere in region number 2 to have my program react. Now, as it stands right now, regions 3 and 4 still don't work. But we can change that and make those work pretty easily. I mean, hopefully, you have a concept of how this works now. So we're not going to go back to paint and, and look at how these are, because hopefully you understand the logic. Uh, but we are going to go ahead and finish this program off. Before I do any more coding, though, I'm going to want to make some comments, um, because this can be a little bit confusing. I might remember what region I'm working with. So I'm going to label these. Uh, this will be check region number one. The second one will be region number two. So we'll type in check region number two into our comment. Let's go ahead and make a copy of region number two, and this will be our region number three check. So our 3D text should be set to three. And in order for region number three to be clicked, I need X value to be less than 539 so that I know it's to the left of this vertical line. So I'm going to change the world X value to less than or equal to 539. And I know my Y value is no longer less than 391, but it has to be greater than 391, meaning that it's on the bottom half of the screen. So if that's the case, we should see our 3D text change to a three and then be sh shown for a total of two seconds. So let's hit play and make sure that that works correctly. So we'll try two real quick. Two still works. And let's try three. Perfect. 
The last thing we're going to want to do is add our region number four check. So let's make a copy. We're going to check region number four. So this will be check for region number four. The number will be four. And the change that I have to make here is the world X has to be greater than 539, meaning it's to the right by the vertical line. And it has to be greater than 391, meaning that it's below this horizontal line. And when we hit play, we click, and we can see that that has a value of 4. We can try 3. That works correctly. 2, working correctly. And 1, working correctly. So fantastic. We now have a mouse tracker that's capable of telling where we've clicked on a single billboard, something that Alice can't natively do. And there you have it, lesson 18.2 is starting to get a little bit lengthy, so we're going to go ahead and cut that there. There will be a lesson 18.3. Some of you may have noticed a bug in your program where if you click on, say, region number one and then move your mouse, it will automatically register a mouse click in another region if you move your mouse there. So in the last video of the basic mouse tracking uh, Alice tutorial, we're going to handle that bug so that you can only click once you know per click. Hopefully this uh, has made sense. I know to some people this can be a complicated topic, but hopefully uh, you're understanding it. If anything is still confusing or you're not understanding any of that information that was presented in the series, uh, go ahead and leave it in the comments and I'll help you out any way that I can. But we'll come back for lesson 18.3 and in lesson 18.3 we'll uh, kind of clean this program up a little bit and then we'll take a look at the uh, challenge program for basic mouse tracking. Thank you so much for your support of the Alice tutorial series. Have a great day and we'll see you next time.